Assalamu alaikum. My name is Meher Hussain. Welcome to Naya Tor. I'm really, really excited to have here with me Sadia Girtezi. Sadia is the co founder of Project Dastan. Project Dastan uses virtual reality to connect partition um, survivors to their childhood homes. It enables them to have access to houses and areas that they had left behind. And currently, Project Dastan has released a three-part animation anthology which explores memory, loss, and trauma. Sadia, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Maher. Now, Sadia, I'd like you to sort of, before we get to the animation, I'd just like you to share something about Project Dastan, how it came about, and what the focus is. Um, yeah, so Project Dastan came about while I was at uni, and um, I was at uni in, uh, abroad in the UK. Um, and as you know, that we only meet uh, Indians while we're abroad. Um, so I met Sparsh uh, Ahuja, uh, whose father migrated from Pakistan, whose grandfather, sorry, migrated from Pakistan. In fact, both his grandparents migrated from Pakistan. Um, and um, he was very interested in, in, well, how can we come back to Pakistan? Is there a possibility of him seeing um, uh, that village again? Um, and it, it came up as a joke between him. There was Amina Malik, who was a friend of ours, and as a joke that, you know, the only way to do it is virtual reality. And then we were like, hey, the technology exists. Uh, maybe we can do a virtual return for him. Um, and if we can do it for him, why not for other people? Because it is a fraud border. It is difficult to get visas. And because of the age of the, this generation, uh, even if they can get a visa, they might not physically be, be uh, able to go back to these places um, for a visit. Um, so we started off with um, finding out a way how to how to do this. So um, Sam Dalrymple is one of my other uh, co-founders. Um, so what we we began doing was um, interviewing partition survivors, hearing their stories, trying to figure out the locations that they remembered, um, what they may have left behind, and then we will go go uh, into India and Pakistan, and I would handle the Pakistan side. They would handle the Indian side and find those locations, fill them in 360 and then create a bespoke um, 360 experience where you're standing and standing in your former home, former mosque, former street, school, whatever we found. Um, so we were able to reconnect maybe uh, around 18 people and we've interviewed around 35. Um, and we reconnected them, not just with virtually with the, those locations, but also we were able to find people, places, um, objects, you know. Um, it's also kind of like a physical connection, WhatsApp calls with, with, you know, families that may have known their families, yeah. Absolutely. Now, Sadia, correct me if I'm wrong, but having grown up in Pakistan, both you and I, we've lived here, we've grown up, we've gone to school here. It always seems that partition is not taken as, I suppose, seriously as it is in India. We've never really been taught the impact of partition and we've never really explored it beyond what we've learned academically, which of course, as we know, is very limited. But in India, it's taken, it's, it's, it's a kehte ki dil ki baat hai. They wear it on their sleeves, like, you know, like the heart on the sleeve. Why do you think that in Pakistan, we haven't explored partition so much? And, and I mean, I personally feel that we should. It's about yeah. time. I mean, 75 years have gone by. And look at where we are today. Why um, do you think this is? And what can be done to address it? Ramir, that question is a PhD thesis in itself. Um, partition in Pakistan um, has been treated as something that was necessary, right? This is where 1947, where this state for Muslims was established, right? Um, so thinking about what went wrong, what could have been done better, um, the, the, the trauma especially, uh, any regret uh, kind of does away with that idea of two nation theory, the idea that, you know, this, this was the, the Muslim promised Muslim land. So the, the sentiments kind of interact. And, and, and I think that's very built into our nationalism and our patriotism. Um, and I do understand that. I don't know if you've seen the Miss Marvel series and then the debate around it as well. Uh, but I think Project Dastan's perspective on it is that regardless of your national allegiances, um, it, it, it is one thing questioning whether Pakistan should have existed. It is another acknowledging 
that at the time it was created, uh, people had to, there was a great loss of life, a great loss of identity and a, a, a physical loss uh, that people experience. This was a sacrifice and our constantly, we've been told in our childhoods that this, this state was made out of sacrifice. Um, so acknowledging the sacrifice that people made to migrate uh, um, and the large scale death that happened, I think that does not and should not in people's mind um, negate Pakistani identity and the reason for the establishment of the Pakistani state. Um, so I think it's a, it's, we should look at it from maybe this perspective rather than, you know, well, a, a nationalist perspective where, well, this was a necessary thing. So why are we criticizing it or why are we thinking about it? Uh, so I think it's a very, very complex discussion about why and how we think about partition here. But we must remember that, you know, so my family never migrated. Um, but my state was made in 1947. So partition is my story as well. Um, so we need to have these conversations, especially now three generations later when, when the generation that sacrificed is gone and we can't hear those words, you know? Um, I, and the last thing that I would say is think about, you know, um, when Bangladesh became a state in 71, it did not feel like a loss for Pakistan. In the same way, maybe we can understand an Indian sentiment of loss. Uh, where this whole territory um, that their grandparents and great grandparents considered Hindustan uh, was lost. So I think it's a why Project Dastan exists to have these kind of conversations and that base these conversation in empathy and humanity. That you know everyone who's a migrant, everyone who's a muhajir, everyone who's uh, the muhajir, the ansar, etc., is built into our our, our uh, um, uh, discussion about Mus being Muslim and Muslim theology and Muslim state. Um, uh, they deserve their stories to be known. It is a difficult thing and we must and should acknowledge their drama. Absolutely. I just feel that 75 years have gone by and let's face it, ours was a generation, like you very correctly said, the third generation, we grew up consuming a lot of Indian culture through whether MTV or ZTV. And there was always this sort of allegiance that, you know, why does this border exist and why are we here? So I think these are really important questions to sort of examine. And, and I really hope that people will start looking at them. Um, I'd like to ask you about this new animation, this three-part animation series. How did this come about? Tell um, us a story so, about it. Yeah, so the, the three-part animation, we've called it Lost Migrations. It's an anthology of three animated shorts. Um, two of them I'm, I've written. Um, uh, and these are animated by Puffball Studios in Pakistan. I don't know if you know about these guys that did share at the bus. So yes, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and one studio in India, it's called Spitting Image. So we wanted to, uh, when we came up with the idea of these stories, we wanted them to be done by Indian and Pakistani artists. And we were able to find the funding for this through the British Council, uh, through the Arts Council and through the National Geographic uh, Society. Um, so these three um, shorts basically are stories that you may not have heard about partition. Um, uh, partition partition studies and the discussion about partition often uh, is just around Punjab, the division of Punjab, uh, the Radcliffe line. And in, in our research and in our field work and in general in this field, we know that partition was a cross-regional uh, international event. Um, and it impacted people across the subcontinent in variety of ways, right? Even if they didn't migrate, there was a, was a big impact. So it's just, it's to expand the discussion about partition to show how diverse the impact was. So our episodes A focused on uh, women um, and what women went through uh, during partition as, you know, one of those things that is not talked about is, uh, has recently come up in oral histories where women have been interviewed. Uh, the second episode is about South Indian seafaring communities um, based in how not just partition, but World War II um, created new borders on that side of, um, of India and um, basically led to a lot of these communities being having to move from Burma, having to lose their seafaring um, uh, lifestyles across um, the, the Bay of Bengal. And so we based that conversation around food and how di diverse food uh, kind of brings that region together. 
Um, so it's a very interesting story that especially people in Pakistan will not have heard. And a third one basically um, tackles the issue of being stateless. Uh, based off um, um, this partition witness who's a serial deportee and then what happens to him. So it's based on Vazir um, uh case about Ghulam Ali who, who was deported and then deported again. So we fictionalize it in, and kind of wrote around that. And it's also based on uh, Toba Take Singh by Manto. Um, so those are kind of like our three uh, animations that we're, we're hoping to start screening in Pakistan soon. Absolutely. And if I'm not wrong, you um, released the, the, the animation at the VNA recently. So no, so uh, we have a VR film that was really that that was has an exhibit at the VNA, but uh, Lost Migrations had its first premiere at the British Film Institute, and this was on Monday. Um, so that's where that was our first. Fantastic. First yeah, now, many, many congratulations. So yeah, I know it's it's too early to ask, but what has been the response so far? Uh, the response has just been amazing. Um, people have really appreciated them. Uh, they've been emotionally touched by them as well. Uh, and people all sort, not just Indian, Pakistan, diaspora here, but anyone, you know, people from different backgrounds, whether it's African, whether it's Middle Eastern, um, British, uh, people, white people who had never even thought about these issues that came out of the British Raj and, you know, um, kind of like also re-education that happened at the British Film Institute. And the funny thing is that uh, Cyril Radcliffe, who drew our border, uh, was actually someone who came to back to the United Kingdom and kind of restructured the British Film Institute. Um, so it was a strange, a strange places to be where we're critiquing um, imperialism and and uh, and the the British Raj and we are being exhibited like the first first places that are inviting us like the Victoria and Albert and the British Film Institute have their roots in in uh, colonialism and and um, some kind of you know racialized idea uh, going back to two three hundred years of what who the South Asian is. Yeah, Sadia, what do you hope to achieve with Project Dastan? Do you hope to continue connecting um, partition survivors to their homes? Do you want to um, create more awareness about partition in Pakistan? What exactly is it that you hope to achieve? Um, so our our first where we started off just by wanting our grandparents' generation to kind of get something back, to get closure, right? You know, to close the loop of history, like, you know, your home, what happened to your home? It's something that you left behind 75 years. And this turned into a greater um, uh, motivation to create conversation, uh, to create empathy through stories uh, um, and try to explore new ways to tell these stories so that so that other people can listen and have empathy because you know these wonderful archives exist the oral history archives exist across across the world um uh, used by academics mostly right um so how can we get something out in front of you know uh, somebody who's not in academia who's not in journalism who's not interested in research but just uh, uh someone who who might may just be watching them because of entertainment and then you know uh, learn something new or, or uh, find something to talk about. Um, so we we wanted to explore those new technologies that can bring storytelling about partition out, and also just to to remind people that this this um, huge thing happened to your parents, uh, to your great grandparents, or 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 your great great grandparents, and and we just to get back in touch to a younger generation with their histories. Um, so uh, I feel that you know, with, with the Indian-Pakistani border, um, Project Dastan should not exist. We should not have to go through these acrobatics of like, we are filmed to see a home again, right? This should just be um, just human, with the shared logic of humanity that if somebody, this is somebody's former village where I'm living, they should be welcome to come. And, you know, this is not just India and Pakistan. This is how global borders are. This is the, the issue of global migration and global Im immigration and how it, it connects to, to Western um, ideas of, you know, who deserves to, to live a good life as well. Uh, so I think it's all these things and, you know, these very complicated ideas of, of how can we do peace building without negating people's opinions and their identities, their allegiances with nationalism, uh, despite those how we build empathy. 
Absolutely. And I think that's what we're hoping for at this milestone historic date that we we'll look back and we'll think that, you know, what have we done or what we haven't done and what can be done to enable future generations to connect in a healthier manner. And I think that on the part of Pakistan, like you said, it, it is a PhD question, but I, I personally would hope that we examine partition more closely because there's all, obviously the question of Pakistan's identity that's very much linked with it somehow or the other. So I hope that somehow or the other, all of this happens. Um, Sadia, thank you so much for coming on today. I know time is precious and you've got a lot going on. So I really appreciate you coming on. Any last thoughts you'd like to share with us before we end? Um, I just like to say that we are coming to Pakistan in mid-November. Uh, we're bringing uh, a the VR experience is coming to uh, and we're working with the citizens archive to bring it to Pakistan. So it's going to be in Lahore and Karachi. Um, so we are going to do the the VR exhibit and you can there's a film that that you know kind of puts you in in the feet uh, feet of uh, a migrant uh, child. It's called Child of Empire. So that VR experience is going to come and we're going to uh, do our screenings of lost migration. So do uh, you know if anybody's watching. Um, do join our socials um, so that you know you can see our schedules and if you'd like to come watch. Uh, Absolutely, and speak there's a Project Dastan uh, account on Instagram, and I is there one on Facebook as well? Yeah, on Twitter, Facebook, we're there. Twitter, yeah. Facebook, everywhere. Project Dastan, guys, please follow them. Thank you once again, Sadia, for joining in. Thank you, Mahal. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. Bye bye.